Hello, hello, professionals. My name is Rico Aladdin, and I am the founder of Professional Lunch. Today, we have a very special guest. Her name is Katie Monion. I'm going to give Katie a chance to introduce herself and what she does. So, Katie, tell us who you are and what you do. Yes, thank you, Rico. I so appreciate that introduction and the time with you here today. Uh, so what I do, that's always like a big question for everyone to answer in their elevator speech, if you will. Okay. So I have the great fortune of leading training at Dale Carnegie of North Dakota and Northwest Minnesota, uh, where we focus on transformation and delivering performance results for professionals throughout our community and around the world. Wow, you are making a difference in the life of leaders, of people. That's, uh, that's a great thing to do. So tell us a little bit about your background, your schooling and stuff. Yes, well, it is amazing to be back on campus at NDSU. So I had the great fortune also of attending NDSU. Sadly, it has been mm -hmm. a long time ago, approaching my 20-year wow. anniversary <laughs> from graduating from NDSU, uh, where I got a degree in business administration and then concentrations in HR and marketing. And that's really what launched me into the business world here in the Fargo-Moorhead community. I was an intern at Microsoft at a pretty pivotal time. Okay. Uh, I actually started at uh, Great Plains mm -hmm. and was there during the transition to Microsoft Great Plains, mm -hmm. Microsoft Business Solutions, and Microsoft. So what an amazing experience as like a 21-year-old. And that's really what led me into recruiting in HR. Okay. But it's so interesting how things unfold mm -hmm. in our different career paths. I remember being in junior high, I think I was an eighth grader, and my mom came home from work one day and she said, I heard about a new field that I think you'd be pretty good at. It's called human resources. Ooh. And so all of these seeds are planted along our career paths, which launched me into going to NDSU, being a recruiting intern. And I held the title in Fargo, I think the only two titles that existed, talent manager. I was a talent manager in two organizations, which sounds pretty cool. I okay. feel like that's like hiring like bands and things like that or <laughs> actresses. Uh, but instead, it was really all about recruiting, human uh, resources, mm -hmm. performance management. Okay, you talk about recruiting. What are uh, some of the things you look at when you're trying to recruit someone? Yeah, so Bethany and I were just visiting about this idea of recruiting mm -hmm. at Dale Carnegie as well. And I feel like recruiting along with training is mm -hmm. this mix of like intuition and then a methodology and experience. Mm -hmm. So in recruiting, it's getting a sense for that person that you're okay. visiting with, helping them to uh, break down any barriers and communicate honestly who they are and what they're looking for. And that was my first passion is when those stars align is when you found this amazing person and skill set for this opportunity that your business needs to fill. Yeah. And when you can bring those two things together, that's pretty magical. We have the opportunity to create that same magic in our Dale Carnegie programs mm -hmm. uh, here as well. Tell us a little bit more about what you do at Dale Carnegie. Yeah, <laughs> so it is really critical and we tailor to each individual person, business, and program. So I know you've had the opportunity, how we met, got to yes. experience one of our leadership programs. Mm -hmm. And so with our different uh, public offerings that we have, we have individuals such as yourself that get to come in and meet different business professionals yeah. where we cover content related to that program, a senior leader, for example, or we have programming around more uh, individuals that are up-and-comers or high potential, mm -hmm. or a traditional Dale Carnegie course that is good for anyone, uh, anytime, anywhere, truly, uh, whether you're just starting out in your career to C-level uh, positions of taking that program alongside each other. Mm -hmm. And so we really get to understand through assessments and getting to know individuals and their organization's need. Where are they at? Where do they need to go? And how can we help to coach and get them there to have those breakthrough moments, mm -hmm. those transformations in their performance so that they can reach those new heights and levels of performance. Wow, wonderful, wonderful. You are training people, giving them new knowledge, you're training leaders. Um, I must tell you, when you train one leader, uh, the work doesn't stay with the leader. It goes with a team member. 
Now, can you tell me uh, one of the highlight of that job? I mean, one of the things that you do, one of the things, one of the people that you meet, you train, and then after that, you say, this is why I do that job. Yes. Can you give an example of that? Those moments happen all the time, which I'm so grateful for. If they didn't, it wouldn't be the right fit. And so yes. the work that we do is very purpose-driven. We're passionate about it. Uh, otherwise, there are all kinds of things. I'd still be in my human re uh, resources field if that were the case, which we can talk about that transition as well. Yeah. But there are those moments in each and every session or each and every program where someone gets up in the front of the room and they have this moment. They have this breakthrough uh, that helps them to see themselves differently that helps them to have that light bulb moment of how maybe they need to interact with someone differently and the result that can happen when they do. Mm -hmm. One of the most powerful things that can happen, whether it's, you know, you and I and just like commenting, you know, how principle number five is smile and how your smile yes. lights up a room <laughs> or uh, with other individuals sharing with us how truly our programs have changed their lives. Yes. That is the goal at Dale Carnegie to create a wow in all caps experience mm -hmm. that helps people to have transformational life changes. Talk about setting the bar high, uh, but truly when we hear that from our participants, you can have no greater honor than to helping impact the trajectory of somebody's life and work. Yes, one of the things that I've learned when I when I took uh, Dale Carnegie here a while back is process of delegation, and I've done it. It works really well for me, and also how I connect on a more intimate level with my people because uh, the relationship matters when you work with the, with the people, yes. and I tell. Them that every day that you know they are the reason that I come to work with a smile on my face every yes. day and that helps a lot now tell me what is uh, what is your view on people management well I think you spoke to it where mm -hmm. it's that emotional connection yes. being able to connect with people on emotional level Dale Carnegie said as humans we mm -hmm. are not creatures of logic sadly we are creatures of emotion and so how can we be vulnerable, demonstrate vulnerability as leaders so that people feel safe? And we know that psychological safety is a huge topic now that we're creating a space for people to get them to know them, their strengths, their opportunities, mm -hmm. uh, where they want to go. And when, again, just like with the recruiting piece, when we can create that alignment between uh, business strategy and people practice, that is where we will reap the most positive sustainable results. Wow, wow. Do you, uh, in your line of work, have you ever had to make a big decision? Absolutely, all the time. So we yeah. think about two years ago, mm -hmm. March okay. 2020, dun, dun, dun. Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> COVID. Yeah. We are an in-person training company. Mm -hmm. And so during that time, we paused our business, just like many other businesses did mm -hmm. and recalculated, recalibrated, uh, recalibrated, what does it need to look like moving forward mm -hmm. so that we can we have that psychologically safe environment. Yes. So we resumed our uh, public programming in June, uh, socially distanced and where we rethought all of our activities. Yes. We used to have an activity where what you talk about decision making, mm -hmm. whether we would have everyone in the room shake each other's hand or not, or having that moment realizing, gosh, are people comfortable with this? Were they comfortable in the past or will they be comfortable moving forward? So whether it's something as simple as that in a program and how you can replace that type of connection with something else so that someone still has that positive, impactful experience to bigger business decisions like hiring and when and timing. Uh, so all, all of those daily decisions that we're bombarded with as leaders, as individuals, as professionals. Wow, wow. So uh, I, I, have you ever led a, a business unit in, your com in any companies? So in this business, leading the training mm -hmm. and quality uh, efforts, certainly. Yeah. Uh, prior, uh, I started this journey moving from human resources to training because of my passion and again, light bulb moment of what if instead of trying to hire this skill set that doesn't exist or isn't readily accessible in our market to developing and training talent in areas that again, 
again, are in alignment with what people want to achieve and what the business needs. Mm -hmm. And it was through that transition in my own career that I took a big risk and made a big decision. Yep. And I quit my full-time job in HR so that I could begin the process mm -hmm. over a year and a half long process to becoming a Dale Carnegie trainer. Wow. So in that, I also led my own business as a LLC and contractor okay. as a trainer for Dale Carnegie. I trademarked a Pilates program and I was doing you know, life coaching and fitness uh, in addition. So that would be the other side of <laughs> more the unofficial uh, side business in addition to leading okay. uh, training and transformation. Cool, cool, cool. Do you mind telling me a little bit about that? Uh, mean, which part? Which part? The, 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 the fitness training. Because yes. That's, uh, uh, absolutely. <laughs> so honestly, you know, it, when you're in a place, it makes you kind of remember mm -hmm. where things all began. So when I was at NDSU, I remember there was a fitness class that mm -hmm. you could take just okay. for exercise on campus. Okay. And I remember taking that program and then after graduating, I took group fitness classes and a gal I met in one of the classes said, we should do this. And just kind of like now, I'm like, do what? She's like, we should, we should teach group fitness classes. Oh, and wow. like, really? <laughs> and so I kind of did it to just, you know, not have her go through the process alone. Mm -hmm. uh, but that was, now I have to pause and think, truly like do the math. That was 18 years ago. Wow. So I've been teaching group fitness classes on the side for 18 years. 18 years. For my own self-care. It's okay. again something that I enjoy doing that gives me energy that helps other people uh, cool. to be healthy and relieve stress. Wow. Kitty, you are contributing so much in the life of so many people. I don't know too many people who do that. That's <laughs> You. <laughs> oh my goodness! I want uh, the the any professionals who are listening or watching this right now to take what they can take from this conversation and work with it. And that's the reason why we have professional lunch. Uh, we bring multiple guests with different. Um, a different kind of knowledge and so that they can share they can see themselves you know 10 5 10 years down the road so if um, a uh, a young student a student is looking at is watching this right now mm -hmm. what would be your advice to them going into the HR field or, or yeah. being a part of the of business for example yes. so what would be what would be something you can tell them well, a session I just facilitated last week in our mm -hmm. Dale Carnegie course was about being flexible, yes. increasing our flexibility. And although that could take on a fitness context and being flexible and limber, I think about it in the same context in the way in which we live and work. Mm -hmm. uh, back, the stat used to be that you would change your career seven times within your working lifespan. And so to young people, I would say to be flexible, be open-minded, uh, take those opportunities that come your way and see where it might lead you. Uh, there might be a path that you have in mind and you might, I feel like I used to be really like fully focused on that no matter what. And as I've uh, gotten older, understanding that, hey, there might be different things that come your way that you say yes to, mm -hmm. uh, that you can explore that you wouldn't expect. And to be open-minded and in alignment with what's in front of you and pursuing different opportunities might take you in a totally different direction than you anticipated, but exactly where you're meant to be. Yes. Uh, by doing this, it leads to that. And yeah. I've absolutely experienced that in my career. And so keeping that in mind and being open and flexible as you're starting out your career and throughout your career journey. Wonderful, wonderful. Be open-minded and flexible. On that note, we're going to take a quick pause here, a quick break, and then we will be right back. We are back. We are with Katie today. Uh, Katie is a lead transformation officer. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. All right. And and she's telling she was telling us about what a young professional need to do in the business world to be open minded and flexible. Now we're gonna talk about one of the best part of the conversation that I like to tell my guests is tell me three things that you really love about what you do in your career. Mm. Connecting with people. Mm -hmm 
connecting with people um, in all different positions, all different industries, all different levels of experience, all different perspectives, communication styles. Uh, we really get to experience and meet people. And at Dale Carnegie, we, we get to meet them where they're at mm -hmm. and then help them from there. So that connection is really important, just like we're here today connecting. Mm -hmm. uh, to me, that's what makes it a really powerful and unique experience, especially as a lot of things have shifted more online. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been a real opportunity and blessing for us to be able to get together in person person and connect in person. Yes. So three things, connecting with people. Yes, that's one. Okay. <laughs> so one of the things that I love about what I do okay. is getting to help people in a really strategic way. Okay. So it's understanding where are they at? And again, what do they want to achieve? Helping them to have these light bulb moments of mm -hmm. what could be getting in their way. Okay. Uh, helping people to be the best version of themselves, to shift their mindset to see who they really are, to see themselves, how we see them, mm -hmm. uh, and all of those strengths and that spark that they have within themselves and really bringing that to the surface so mm -hmm. that they feel confident and, and others can feel that interaction as well. Yes. Thirdly, I would say the impact that we get to have then in totality. Mm -hmm. So we have that individual connection, helping supporting people, mm -hmm in their roles and how that can impact an organization. Yeah. We have clients where they send all of their new hires to the Dale Carnegie course, mm -hmm. or where we do a program in-house for one employer. Mm -hmm. And so when we, in this Dale Carnegie course that I'm facilitating now, we have uh, a couple different clients that have numerous people in the program. And we were literally having a conversation as a group that through sheer mass, we have the opportunity to continue to shift the culture as they apply what they're learning and continue to encourage those that have already taken this program and experience to do that as well. And so all of that together can be really powerful for organizations as well as individuals. Okay. And for me as the facilitator of the experience. Yes, ab absolutely. Now, uh, would I ask for the three things that, um, um, that you love. I would like to have an example for which, let's say you work with a group or with a, with a manager or somebody, mm -hmm. and then you, you notice the transformation. So give me an example of, uh, give me an example for, uh, you know, for each of those things that you mentioned, because I want anyone who's watching this right now, anybody who's in the professional world watching this right now, they can say, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, this example will really stick with me because those, you know, connecting with people, they're like, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. But when they hear how it goes into practice, that's sure. uh, that's where it makes the biggest difference. Yeah. Give me an example of these things. And it looks different for everyone. Yes. We all have our hangups or things that might be getting in our way that mm -hmm. we're unaware of. Mm -hmm. uh, one gentleman, uh, we had a breakthrough uh, with him in the program and that he was understanding that the way he used his sense of humor mm -hmm. Uh, was making him appear unapproachable. And as someone who has that wit as mm -hmm. well, I can appreciate where he was coming from, but that was a real light bulb moment that as a leader, mm -hmm. with everything having that kind of ba -dum bum opportunity, that it was turning people off from feeling that they could approach him or that uh, anything that he was saying was taken seriously. Mm -hmm. And so by that leader having that moment, it led to not only a breakthrough with him, but actually a person that he led that was in the program with mm -hmm. him, having a really powerful emotional uh, breakthrough and winning uh, a very significant award within the program as a result of their dynamic together. Wow, wonderful, wonderful. Can you think of any other example? Sure, I mean, it truly, it's harder to almost think of a specific one because it happens all the time. Wow. I want to be mindful too of our participants and like yeah. things that they're communicating. We talk mm -hmm. about in our program is like Vegas. What mm -hmm. happens here stays, stays here. here. Yes. <laughs> and so they're sharing powerful things that, you know, they're processing in their own personal lives 
There's another, you know, individual that just having the courage to stand in front of the room and communicate how they yes. used a principal yes. can really be a breakthrough moment in that they're not used to speaking up mm -hmm. or maybe they're not used to communicating in front of a group of individuals. Mm -hmm. And we truly see people in that example in particular through what they've shared really blossom and come into their own and have this sense of strength and courage that was not there before. Yes, yes. Wow, wow. This is going so well here. Now, I, I I want to ask you, um, how do you, or how do you suggest that people who work with other people who lead a team uh, keep people motivated? You know, in a line of whatever the line of work might might be. I mean, you can give me an example if you come across an example. Tell me, how do you how do you do it, or how do you think people should do it? Sure. <laughs> Well, we have a whole formula for that that we call the magic formula in mm -hmm. motivating people to take action. And how we do that is talking about our own experience mm -hmm. and examples or examples that that person has experienced. Mm -hmm. uh, what are we asking them to do and then what's in it for that person? So mm -hmm. it's not about us and what we need or the organization, but truly what's in it for the individual to help them to understand the why behind what we're asking them to do. Mm -hmm. I think in motivation, it also understands uh, or requires of us as leaders is understanding more about who that person is, mm -hmm. what drives them, what, what do they love about what they do, what are the things that they would change, uh, what are their goals and aspirations, and the more that we can tailor our conversations mm -hmm. to understanding and aligning with what they're where they're at or what they're trying to achieve you know of course it's not then about motivating them or um you know creating this that isn't there but really harnessing and engaging that person on those things that are already inherent in them wow wonderful wonderful now we're gonna go to the next part of the conversation because uh well timing is uh, time is a little is somewhat of an issue here <laughs> sure. but so we're gonna get to the next part and i like to call this my favorite part uh, every guest that come to the to professional lunch, I like to ask them to think, to tell me, what do they think? What do you think are the top three challenges that people in your line of work will face? Mm -hmm. You know, in their career. Sure. Uh, this is difficult because we're thinking about not only in a training capacity, but we serve so many different industries. So I think from an overall business standpoint, there's you know, a lot of things going on. We've, we've dealt with COVID. You know, mm -hmm. we had the opportunity to connect you know, in the last two years. And that is one uh, challenge that's mm -hmm. impacted each industry differently, whether it is socially distanced work or remote or on site. And so just like our clients face that challenge, mm -hmm. so do we. And we're thinking about how do we deliver this? Uh, we have opportunities and options to deliver training online. Mm -hmm. We also know that a lot of our participants and clients want to be in person. Yes. Uh, so it's navigating that challenge and then the shifting challenges within that such as you know, supply chain issues is now the, the next thing that people and businesses are dealing with. And so we, we incorporate these into uh, our conversations and our sessions. And just like our clients face those challenges, mm -hmm. so do we. So that would be one thing. Mm -hmm. uh, one challenge is this being nimble and adjusting to, you know, the new landscape and shifting things online and also staying true to who we are and offering those in-person experiences yeah. for people to connect together. Mm -hmm. uh, other challenges, of course, hiring. Uh, yes. North Dakota, I've, I always say, you know, I started in recruiting. I think we've been under 4% unemployment, like my whole business career. So we're talking 20 years of experience where it's limited workforce. And so we face that as a small business. We face that where we have really highly skilled uh, specific requirements for our employees becoming a trainer, like I said, is a, about a year, year and a half development process where a trainer uh, really devotes their time and attention to getting certified before they can facilitate and start earning a living in that capacity. Yeah. 
or a business development person where it takes a really unique skill set and understanding of the workforce to be able to have those types of conversations. So I would say hiring workforce availability is certainly a challenge that we face as well. Mm -hmm. Wow, wow, wonderful. This is wonderful. So how do you, um, I don't know, uh, if, I, if I overstep here, but how do you approach, um, I mean, do the business contact you and say that I have this problem with, you know, these kind of managers and how does the process go? Tell me a little bit about how do you do this? You know, like for instance, I don't know if I'm making this clear, but uh, let's say, uh, you know, uh, uh, an employer has, you know, like a few managers and they say, how do they approach you and say, oh, this manager is having this kind of problem. I want, you know, yes. I want to see some improvement. So how does that work? Yes, it looks different again for every situation. Mm -hmm. So we might have someone reach out to us regarding a group of leaders and mm -hmm. knowing the certain challenges mm -hmm. and where we would come in and facilitate programming uh, to have breakthroughs and interactions, um, interventions around those types of topics and issues. Mm -hmm. We also have businesses or, uh, that will contact us and say, hey, you know what, I'm looking for coaching for this one individual mm -hmm. as they're stepping into this role or these challenges that they're facing. Mm -hmm. And each uh, offering or response is unique and tailored to that business and that situation. So we might do um, some feedback assessments or 360s to mm -hmm. gather more insight and information. There might be one-on-one uh, -on -one coaching plans and breakthrough goals for those leaders. It might be a training solution. It might be a combination of all of those. So again, okay. it really depends on what is uh, kind of the route or the heart of what's going on mm -hmm. with that individual uh, or that business on if we're doing one of those options or maybe that uh, manager attends one of our programs like the Develop Your Leadership Potential or the Leadership Training for Results program. Uh, or if we bring a program uh, that large into an organization as well versus more of a workshop setting. Okay, cool. So it's really identifying what is the problem, as Dale Carnegie yep. uh, would say, mm -hmm. and then what are the different options, and then what's the best possible solution given that client and their need. Wonderful, wonderful. So what's next for Katie? What is next <laughs> for me? I mean, I feel like it's more like look at my calendar and see what is on the schedule next. I teach uh, a Pilates class this evening. We've got our Dale Carnegie courses here going this after uh, this week here in the afternoons. Okay. And then we're launching that leadership training for results program mm -hmm. next week. It's like oh, where wow. has the time gone? It's so been a year. Is it, is it, is it I, I think it has been exactly wow, a year. Oh wow, well, yeah. Time goes back so fast. It sure does. Wow. Never wow. a dull moment. So uh, if a professional is watching this right now what does Katie has for them as an advice or something that they can do for their careers? So what do you what do you have to say for, uh, you know, because you recruit people, you know, the skills that uh, employers are looking for. Uh, you've been, you know, in the business, in HR, mm -hmm. you know that. And we have, we have students watching this live right now. Some of them might be graduating. So what can you tell them to... Um, you know, as they are planning to start their careers. Sure. Yeah. I would say, as we've heard, success is never final. Mm -hmm. Celebrating those milestones, those achievements along the way as we progress toward our goal. And then to remain adaptable mm -hmm. and resilient. Mm -hmm. We know that there will be challenges that we experience uh, personally and professionally. And so to meet the moment mm -hmm. and to keep trying, uh, never give up. And you'll continue to succeed as you continue to be flexible, open-minded, adaptable. Yes. That's where we get <laughs> to that resiliency, that we show up mm -hmm. and we're present and open to what's in front of us. Wonderful, wonderful. Katie, it's such a pleasure to have you here for a very special professional lunch episode i can tell you i'm really happy that you are here today well thank you it's my great pleasure to hang out with you rico yes hopefully you will come back on a different time and uh yeah we'll have We'll have you again, uh, well, maybe a different event because uh, sure. you are in the professional world and uh, uh, that professional uh, professional lunch always keep uh, uh, in touch with the, the guests so that, you know, we stay in touch and we make great connections. So, any final word, Katie? 
No, have a great uh, rest of your day, everyone. Thank you for having me. It's great to connect with a leader in our community such as yourself. Thank you so much. Awesome. Wonderful. Now, this is the point that I tell you. It's up to you to make today a great day. So have a great day.